Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. We'll chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karava Vahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamas Tuma Vit Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant from verses 11 to 15 of chapter 3. Devan Bhavayata Nena Devan Bhavayata Nena Te deva bhavayantu vah Te deva bhavayantu vah Parasparam bhavayantah Parasparam bhavayantah Shreya paramavapsyath Shreya paramavapsyath Ishtan bhogan hi vo devaha Ishtan bhogan hi vo devaha Dasyante yagnya bhavita Dasyante yagnya bhavita Taidatana pradayai bhyaha Taidatana pradayai bhyaha Yo bhunte ste na eva sah. Yo bhunte ste na eva sah. Yagnya shishta shina santah. Yagnya shishta shina santah. Muchyante sarva kil bishaihi. Muchyante sarva kil bishaihi. Bhunjate te twagham papaha. Bhunjate te twagham papaha. Ye pachantyat makaranat. Ye pachantyat makaranat. Annad bhavanti bhutani. Annad bhavanti bhutani. Parjanyadanna sambhavah 
यज्ञाद्भवति पर्जन्य यज्ञ कर्म समुद्भव कर्म ब्रह्मोद्भव विद्धि कर्म ब्रह्मोद्भव विद्धि ब्रह्माक्षरसमुद्भव ब्रह्माक्षरसमुद्भव तस्मागत ब्रह्म तस्मागत ब्रह्म नि प्रतिष्ठि हरिओ and a very good day to all of you so in the last few sessions we have been seeing the principle of devah god with respect to sadhana so some people ask this question as to god is someone who is beyond everything then uh, how can we have gods in plural devah i have explained that in the previous sessions as we went along so the supreme god is the infinite formless reality its manifestations are varied so we cannot escape the manifestation the world whatever we are calling as the world is nothing but the manifestation of that infinite reality only whatever be the faith whatever be the religion they always say that the world is created by god no so whatever is created by god has to be godly this is a simple logic if you go further deep into it um it's not merely the godly godly nature but it is actually a manifestation of god so you being a part of the world you cannot escape the manifestations because this question comes to some people's mind that why do we need to bother about uh, the relative gods and all that straight away uh, let me just focus on the highest if you can do it in the real sense of the term means no other thought no other emotion all your thoughts emotions everything that is your entire mind with all its layers deeper layers also even at the subconscious and deeper conscious level there should be no other factor so, so single pointedly with your entire personality if you can focus on that infinite formless reality then you don't require all this ananyas chinta later on he'll be saying very very powerful phrase you know ananya chinta means no other thought or no other uh, factor within you so if you are at that level then uh, you will 
automatically uh, become a sita pragna so it is easy to talk high philosophy but uh, practically what is happening within you your mind is running helter skelter to so many things so actually it boils down to not wanting to put an effort generally people come to spirituality i am not saying everyone but many people come to spirituality to shirk their efforts they don't want to put in that extra effort so they feel if i go to a guru the guru will put or uh, if i uh, seek god god will put in all the effort so that without any effort i can get everything that is not true spirituality that is first of all that is not a true truly uh, true spiritual seeking and if somebody preaches that kind of a thing that person has an ulterior motive because why would any guru encourage tamas laziness and other tamasic habits that's the first thing which we need to conquer so why all this it's so complicated so many principles are there simply i'll just sit and think of god yes I, I, on paper you are right if a person says that who's preventing you just start thinking feeling breathing everything let it be dedicated to that infinite if you are already at that very advanced level it means you have crossed over all that so what do we mean by you don't then you don't require all this is you have crossed over all that that is a phd level so just because you are talking about it first of all a person who is at that level will not talk about it he, he, such a person will not come and ask this question to anyone see just imagine a person's mind is completely merged with that infinite no other thought no other feeling no other emotion every every aspect of his personality is directed towards the infinite now would he really get this doubt as to why gods are there in plural do i need to practice this do i need to nothing that person has already crossed over all this and come to that final stage so the fact that you are asking this question itself means you are not at that level <laughs> first you should understand that the moment there is a tendency to discuss and all that see if you have don't suppress it even a tamasic person will not have any questions we are not talking of that state but at that advanced level is he going to be bothered whether am i on the right track am i not on the right track mind is completely united with the self no so our great yogis and rishis they understood the psychology the human psychology very well that is why they have devised a system see if you take an educational system we need to start from nowadays it's uh, pre kg or whatever uh, as far as i am concerned pre kg and all should just be a place where children just play nothing more but anyway let's keep that as a starting point for argument sake so any educational system will start from the basic and go right up to the highest maybe a phd it may be post doc whatever it is now this is what we call as a good educational system a system 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सिस्टम शुड बी कंप्लीट नो सो आवर योगीज हैव क्रिएटेड सच अ पावरफुल इनर एजुकेशन सिस्टम द योगिक विस्टम विच हैव गिवन इज एक्चुअली अ कंप्लीट सिस्टम वॉट एवर लेवल यू आर इन यू विल हैव टू स्टार्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग दैट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द विस्टम से एवरी संडे द होल विस्टम इज बींग गिवन टू यू इन ट्रिकल्स लिटल बाई लिटल अ फ्यू फ्यू प्रिंसिपल नाउ यू विल नैचुरली रियक्ट टू अ फ्यू प्रिंसिपल्स इट मीन्स दैट इज टू योर लेवल पिक दम अप एंड स्टार्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग so a person who says i am unable to uh, focus at all start from basics if you take uh, a student who is in fifth standard and make him appear for a um, uh, masters exam definitely that student will fail there is no meaning in that so in any system you uh start from the basics and then you do your sadhana diligently that is effort you put an effort diligently and you keep moving system moving up systematically system itself means it is systematic it has the, the the principle behind it is systematization so our yogic system is nothing but a series of sadhanas or spiritual practices starting from the basics to the highest just as you have pre school and then phd or post doc whatever now uh whatever level you are in you will naturally start you your mind will naturally react to that it's not that you will be against other things but uh, you will know on ah, this i am already uh, practicing so these are the things which i need to practice you, your mind will automatically react in that way so take them up and start practicing and you will keep on moving it is true at the final level you don't require any specific thing to do no specific sadhana you just have to simply do nothing that is what arunagiri nadar said no summa iru summa iru means not merely verbally keeping quiet or just controlling all the physical actions and sitting no summa iru means do just be don't do anything just be means from the deepest level we are talking of the mind the different layers of the mind when all the layers of the mind are purified of its various impressions then internally you will be in a state of rest that is what he is talking of uh, he is referring to when he says sumair just be that is at the highest level because he had reached that level so he uh, said that so different masters have given different uh, aspects of the system depending on uh, who would have who, uh, come before them whom uh, uh, what sort of a person did uh, that particular master address so here in the yogic approach we are not merely taking the opinion of any one master even this is not the opinion of lord krishna even though he is an avatar it is not merely his personal opinion it he see he is actually conforming his teachings to that and to that system so we will have to get the full knowledge and overview a complete understanding we, we, you have to get the total picture so at from the highest level 
it is the infinite and just focus on that it is you and your relationship with god nothing else is required but in order to get to that state that level you need to do all this one of the most important factors in uh, the spiritual path is to be brutally frank with yourself many people you know they suppress their energies say supposing let us say uh, some problem has come and a person is affected by that is stressed because of that now uh, his guru tells him listen you you are affected so you do this sadhana release that immediate tendency of the mind is to say no 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 i am fine why because you want to escape from it the mind wants to escape from it so you need to learn to be very frank with yourself only then you will understand what your level is because when we were seeing what gods represent from the cosmic level and then from the outer level and from the inner level so uh, these are all, you know we we are st- we are going through various uh relative goals and if you go through this process in a correct way he says parama param shreyah avapchyata you shall obtain the highest good it's a question of time but if you suppress yourself by not accepting not accepting means not to another person to yourself then you will never be able to determine what level you are in say i have seen uh people who have a lot of weaknesses whose desires are not at all under their control they talk very high philosophy i have seen this with many people a person who is an alcoholic who is uh, who is addicted to smoking he will talk very high philosophy <laughs> this is what they said not devil quoting the scriptures they say so you have a lot of uh, cravings for this that and all but you just say um, uh, you know i am always thinking about god some people they say you know when we ask what do you want they will say god god realization do you really mean it okay supposing right now if i were to tell you the you will get the experience of god realization all the other things will be taken away from you the wealth name fame family everything will be taken away from you but you will be given god realization will you accept it slowly you will say please wait i want god but also wealth also this also that <laughs> so your list will now start uh, increasing there is uh, we are not belittling there is nothing wrong with that but the, the point here is what is wrong is not those uh, uh, desires per se but uh, you trying to suppress them or you trying to cover them up and putting on an act as if you now you are completely pure and you are just focused on god if you are at that level i am reiterating i am making that statement again if you are at that highest level you don't require all this you will not come and ask anything you will not come and say i am at a uh, at that level of purity and all that sometimes you know uh the mind plays a lot of tricks some people they go you know they go to the master <laughs> they tell the master you know sir nowadays i'm so pure i'm thinking of god i'm do this, this that it means you're not at that level see lord krishna was an avatar 
direct manifestation of the infinite. And Arjuna was his very close friend. But Arjuna never suspected that Krishna was, a, was an avatar. He never, forget avatar, he didn't even suspect that Krishna was, a, was at an advanced level spiritually. At least that much credit should, should be given. No? Even that he didn't recognize. Here the situation forced him to, uh, to seek help. But otherwise, he considered Krishna as his friend only. And that is why in the, se in the second chapter, he asked that question about Sita Pragna. Sita Pragna sya ka bhasha. Means how will a Sita Pragna speak? How will he walk? How will he talk? How will he sit? Now, uh, he is talking of a Sita Pragna, a person who is at the highest level, as a third person. If we wanted to know how will a perfect person behave or talk and all that, he just has to see Krishna, no? It means he is not recognizing Krishna's level. What does this show? No less an avatar a purusha. If Krishna was a purna avatar, no? No less a person like Lord Krishna was so humble and ordinary that his close friend couldn't recognize that he was spiritual. He never went and uh, advertised saying that I am spiritual, I am spiritual, oh Arjuna, you know how much I know, you know I am the greatest. All that he didn't say. The situation demanded such a thing here. In order to increase Arjuna's faith, because unless Arjuna has full faith in him, he will not be able to practice whatever he is saying. Therefore, he showed his spiritual powers a little bit. But otherwise, all the great yogis and masters, they follow the footsteps of these great avatars. If Lord Krishna was so simple, then what about you and me? So that tendency to, uh, to establish one's purity to another person itself, is a sign that you are not at God established in that purity. That inner establishment is not there. So be very frank with yourself. See, you are living in this world, you are a part of this world. And the world is a manifestation of that supreme reality. So the different manifestations are the different gods. So at the cosmic level, be one with nature. At the outer level, fulfill all uh, your goals in a sadhana way. Nothing is right or wrong per se. It is all your bhavana that matters. Wanting something is not selfishness. If you want something at the cost of another person, then only it is selfishness. See, a, a baby, a baby wants a toy. You will not say a baby is selfish. There is an inherent purity about it, no? So, you should reach that level where all your desires, that is kamaha, uncontrolled desires, become icha. Icha means uh, desire out of will. And then at the internal level, keep the relative goals of self-purification and self-development. Keep on growing. Day by day, become better, 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 more and more divine. This is the path towards the ultimate state of divinity, God-realization or self-realization. This is the only path. See, you may... Take any religion, any so-called path and all that. This is the basic principle. Where am I today? What level are you placed? And then how do you become better, 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 better? Till you reach that state of Paramshreya. The highest good means the best. 
good, better and the best. Best means infinite. Because nothing can be higher than the infinite. So this is the path which has been chopped out. So don't uh, encourage your uh, tamasic nature or your ego which will come in the way and try to pull you away from your sadhana. As I mentioned to you uh, in one of the sessions, uh, if any thought tries to pull you away from sadhana, try to, it tries to pull you away from what your guru has asked you to do, then understand that it is the trick which is being played by the mind. Actually, the trick is being played by the ego, but it makes it feel as if the mind is doing. And since you have identified with the mind, you think that is only true. So be very, very careful in this. Because as we go into deeper and deeper levels, as you start advancing spiritually, the inner challenges will be more subtle. You will have to face them and you will have to wade through all these internal challenges. Only then will you successfully cross over to the infinite. So, may you nourish the gods by this. May the gods nourish you. So, when you work for a higher cause, you will get back in return. This is the basic principle. First you give and then you get. This is the principle of life. So life itself is made up of this give and take only. And in this give and take, what should we focus on? Is this first give. Just focus on giving. Then automatically you will receive. And that time you can receive that when, you, when it comes back to you. We are all the time focused on getting, receiving, but we fail to give, we fail to play our part. Many people when they come and say, Sir, this problem, oh, my, my mind is agitated, this is there, that is there. What to do? Can you give some special sadhana? I ask them, first of all, are you doing whatever sadhana has been given to you right now? Properly, every Sunday are you properly listening to it on time. There itself, they, are, they think. The moment they pause means it means they are not doing it. After the Sunday session, are you sitting for 5-10 minutes, reflecting on the points, are you noting them down, are you putting it uh, there for uh, in order to receive further higher blessings. Then are you, every day are you doing the Yoga Sankirtan Sadhana, are you attending the Empire? So you are, first ask yourself, if these things, uh, if you are not doing these things in a proper way, why do you need to ask for some special Sadhana now? <laughs> there is nothing like special Sadhana. All this is, uh, is the foolishness of the mind. The mind is so foolish, it keeps... Uh, generating unrealistic expectations. You almost live in a kind of a fantasy world, you know. So come back to reality. Whatever you give will come back to you with greater force. This is the law of life. So if you want a particular thing in life, now start giving it. Let us say you want love. Start giving love. You will get back love automatically. See, even uh, uh, between a husband and wife, recently I had uh, uh, received uh, a mail where the husband gives a list of things about the wife, you know, this is not, this is, she's like this, she's like that. Is it wrong to expect constant love 
to which my question is are you giving constant love to her what is love love means affection towards the other person without any conditions so your expectations are too much if you are basically giving unconditional love then you have all the right to expect but a person who is giving unconditional love will not expect and such a person will get it will get back love automatically this is the law of life so if you want love give love if you want others to respect you you start respecting others you will uh, disrespect everyone but you want everybody else to respect you how is it possible if you want to be happy if you want happiness start giving happiness to others experiment with this and see that is why uh, our great master said a, a portion of your wealth should be Uh, used for uh, charity for to be sh- it is to be shared with others because that will come back to you that will multiply and come back if you earn and if you give away everything then you will be in trouble because you require you why are you earning ultimately in order to fulfill your duties so that uh, that is also required a portion of it see this law is applicable even with respect to the spiritual growth initially when you start off with all this your focus will be on me i me myself my desires what i want that is how you will relate with the guru you know sir i want this i want that now he will give the wisdom the sadhana and as you get more and more purified now your focus will slowly shift instead of merely asking for yourself you will start thinking in terms of why this wisdom is so good let you know it should spread to as many people as possible i received one mail recently from uh, one uh, person where he says sir uh you know i have benefited so much from these sessions every sunday i've been watching i've been doing the yoga sankirtan sadhana i mean i have attended many empowerments many many goals of mine have all got fulfilled certain things looked impossible but they have got fulfilled uh so after all this now the uh, i i feel uh, is there you know the question is asked can, can i be of any service can can i play any role in spreading this to others see he is not talking of lecturing giving a discourse <laughs> it's not that he's saying can i serve this higher cause what what do i need to do in order to introduce these sessions to others it's a very beautiful thought so the moment you start thinking like that then you whatever blessings you were earlier getting let us say it is x now when you are thinking of the higher cause the cause will nourish you further you will start getting more this is a very strange law the law of uh, detachment you know attach you lose detach you gain ras the famous uh, quote by swami ramatirtha it's not that it is his original idea it is taken from the vedas only so when your detachment means when your focus shifts from the lower and it starts expanding your consciousness starts expanding you start thinking in terms of serving others serving humanity you know you know these are all noble goals then what is interesting is all the lower desires automatically get fulfilled 
That's what you mean. May you nourish the gods by this. Gods means the higher. And may the gods nourish you. That is an automatic process. So, the mind will ask this question. So, if I keep working for the higher cause, what will happen to me? This is what will happen. You will be nourished. This is the law of life. So, this is a very simple way by which you can perform yagnya. What are the desires you are having? Now, start giving that. Automatically, you will start getting. Sir, I want everybody to respect me. Start respecting others. Sir, I want to uh, gain more knowledge. Start giving knowledge. Sometimes, when you learn something, you are very reticent about uh, sharing it with others. Forget you sharing it, even indirectly sharing it with others. Like uh, one person told me, Sir, I don't know why, I am so benefited by this Sunday session, but I don't know why I feel very shy in telling others that this is a very useful session. <laughs> that means that is the level of selfishness. You know, Only you want to benefit, you don't want others to benefit. See, the Guru Shakti gets attracted wherever there is selflessness. One step below is at least unselfishness. If you want food for yourself, you this much is enough, or whatever your quantity is, that is enough. But supposing you want to feed 10 people, no more food is required. So automatically more food will be given to you. So the higher your cause, the activity being the same, the higher your motive, the higher your cause, the more energy you will receive. That is the beauty. So, may you nourish the gods by this. First, you put in all the effort and may the gods nourish you. So, bhava yantaha, bhava yata, bhava yantu. So, I told you, bhava means your attitude. What is your attitude towards your life itself in general? Are you having that pure attitude? Are you uh, always focusing on doing whatever you ought to do so that you deserve or are you all the time complaining? This is what you should start reflecting. So, what is this bhava? Now, we will see the different dimensions of uh, what uh, bhavakam is. But before that, uh, with respect to yagnya, there is uh, uh, something which you need to know. That is, if you take a fire ritual, the yagnya ritual, now the actual, I am talking of the actual fire ritual, there is a havan kund. Uh, which they build. Traditionally, they put sand and then they uh, uh, build the Havan Kund with uh, stones, bricks. So, that is a traditional method of doing it. Uh, later on, for convenience sake, nowadays ready-made Havan Kunds are <laughs> available. Now, the as long as the bhavana is okay, it's fine. But when you do it traditionally, uh, that has a, that has a tremendous impact. Like for example, lighting a lamp, that natural agni is there, no? That warmth is different from when you switch on a tube light or an artificial light, isn't it? So, we, they, they had this habit of always lighting a lamp in the, in the puja room or wherever. Now, you, you just light a lamp, invoke 
the higher and then you place your palms on top feel the warmth and then when you take it to your eyes and when you do like this that has a very nice uh, feel about it same thing if you do it uh, with technology let's say you have a uh, uh, an led light <laughs> instead of the lamp it doesn't give that that feel there you don't ask me why that is how it is so there is this havan kund i'm telling you the procedure so the, this uh, see the, the principle of yagna uh, as i told you uh, it has varied applications but now i'm talking of the vedic yagna this is how they were performed the havan kund was formed and then there is a person called yajamana that is the person who wants to do the yagna that person is called yajamana so he approaches a priest a priest is a representative of brihaspati brihaspati is a guru of gods so a priest who is well versed with all that and uh, he seeks the help of the priest and uh, the in the original vedic yagna four types of priests come see if we get into the technicalities it is an endless thing but i'll just cover a few points which is more than enough as far as your sadhana is concerned like the four type of priests are like you have a priest called hota who takes from the rigveda and chants then you have another priest called advaryu he takes the methods from the uh, yajurveda then you have another priest called udghata who uh, chants from the samaveda and then you have the fourth kind of priest called brahma what he does is in any procedure you can never be 100% perfect so there are always mistakes possible so he takes certain uh, um, uh, what do we call as com- compensatory mantras from atharvana veda and ichans so uh, it's an elaborate procedure first of all what this shows us these four vedas are only divisions for convenience it's the same veda vyasa who compiled all the four vedas because i am mentioning that because nowadays people are fighting over that which veda is superior yajurveda or samaveda i am a yajurvedi you are a, i am a samaveda they i know people who fight like this it's utterly foolish so the yajamana the or the person who wants to do the yagna takes the help of brihaspati the priest and uh, the yagna is performed now i'm not go- see there are different types of fires the southern fire northern so many things are there but we'll get to the we'll directly get to the principle which is related to our sadhana that is what we are interested in fundamentally the fire is there and you pour the oblations and you invoke the gods when you are pouring the oblations for each god one one mantra is chanted and at that time the oblation is poured and you receive the blessings of that particular god now what is the medium between you and that god it is the agni fire <laughs> this is what is the most important thing which you need to note that is your pouring the oblations the uh, mantras are being chanted then you are pouring the oblations into that sacred agni sacred fire and uh, it is said that the fire will carry uh, the energy of your offerings to 
the gods. So that is why uh, you know the fire god shoots up, they say. And when your that energy is carried to the gods, the gods nourish you. Gods give back their blessings in return, and you immediately bow down. This is the principle of the uh, yagna. That is the, the the procedure of yagna uh, ritual. So as far as our sadhana is concerned, it is very very clear. So we need to understand this uh, what the yagna is, and now we need to eke out the sadhana principles. That is what is a yogic approach. So what is this havan kund? Even before the havan kund, we'll first focus on the yajamana, the person who wants to do yagna. in your context who is the person who wants to do yagna it is you only you are your yajamana you are your the the you are the person who is living your life so if you don't have an intention to do yagna then no priest is going to come and do it for you so as a sadhak first comes your intention to develop your seeking what makes you a yajamana in i am talking of with respect to the spiritual growth are you a sadhak are you seeking do you have that desire to for self purification yagna uh, yagna is a pure, uh, is a purificatory process so one who seeks one who has that desire for the higher is called yajamanah see there are so many types of yagna certain yagnas are specifically directed to a particular the fulfillment of a particular uh, uh, desire or goal now we are not getting into all that we are directly getting into the sadhana principle so the first uh, criteria if you want to apply all this in your life is you should become a yajamanah you should take the responsibility for your life build a desire to develop you should seek the higher guidance so when you are a yajamanah you will go, you will seek the guidance of brihaspati that is symbolic brihaspati was a guru of the gods so you will go to your guru and seek spiritual guidance sir i want to develop spiritually what should i do the fact that you are seeing these sunday sessions on a consistent basis every sunday itself means you are already a yajamana you you are having the desire to develop because if you do this mechanically you will not be able to uh, consistently do it or if you are doing it because somebody pulled you your friend or parents or somebody has pulled you and said you have to watch this one day you'll watch next week forcefully you may watch third week you will give some reason and run away <laughs> it means you are not a yajamana so first thing is that yajamana is very important and then he has to take guidance he wants to do yagna but it is the guru who uh, guides him through that process fully so you seek the help of the guru shakti this is how uh, the sadhana should be done now the chanting of the mantras represents the infusion of divine energy in everything which you do it the 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 see when when the mantras are chanted in the right way they produce certain sound vibrations the yoga sankirtan is the is the highest form of sound vibrations these materials have been given to you just like that so sometimes when everything is given on a silver plate you don't know the value of what you're getting that is why i say the entire energy of the vedas are there in the yoga sankirtan sadhana material 
why do we say that all the great masters the you know they they did so much of sadhana and uh, uh, they uh, they mastered the science of uh, sound vibrations that is that principle has been used that has been uh, infused in these yoga sankirtan sadhana materials it's up to you to use them so these positive vibrations energize the whole place energize the yajamana the person who's doing the yagna and then the offerings what is it that you want to give your effort the havan kund represents your field of activity in your field of activity you will have certain talents that the, those talents are the offerings which you are prepared to give without effort you cannot get anything in life be everybody wants everything you are you go and ask anyone what do you do you want uh, this you want that they will say yes please give me what is the price which you are willing to pay in terms of efforts when the moment we talk of effort now most of the people run away so the offerings represent your individual talents the havan kund represents the field of activity it can be any field for example family family is a havan kund see you should now change your perception these rituals are not uh, should not be separate from your life you should convert your whole life into your havan kund if you take your whole life that itself is a havan kund so in your life in general you need to offer your talents you need to put in hard work and efforts or put in your efforts that can be done even uh, with respect to individual fields for example family family is a it's like a havan kund now if all the members of the family they all focus on what they have to do if a husband focuses on what he has to do the wife focuses on what she and uh, she has to do the children focus on what they have to do they all do it, do the yagna offer their oblations in the sacred fire of the family then that will shoot up they will get the divine blessings that uh cause that the, the will grow the family will grow the happiness factor will increase and what will you get back in return when the uh, when all, when the entire family is full of happiness and positive energy what you will get back is also happiness and positive energy supposing you take your office if you consider your office as your havan kund now uh, pouring all your oblations into that fire means if each member of an organization starts uh, functioning for the sake of the organization now that organization will grow and when the organization grows who will be blessed it is again the individual members so may you nourish the gods gods represent the higher goals see we let's take a family unit if the husband constantly thinks of his happiness i me mean myself wife has to cater to me like the that person who has written that mail no it's a direct message please don't think i'm pointing out a, a a fault it is not about pointing out the fault but unless you base your life on basic principles you cannot be happy it is only for your good that this is being told So if the husband thinks only of his happiness then he is not offering for the common cause of the family if the wife only thinks of herself i me mean myself all the time the children are also like that will that family unit prosper will that family unit generate positive energy no so gods represent the higher higher goals in life so how do you practicalize this with respect to sadhana 
whenever you have goals one is to work merely for yourself and stop with that the other is to make your goal as higher as possible and the more high your goal is the more inspired you will become and that will come to you as blessings so first is the yajmanah you should have the desire to grow then you consult you take guidance uh from the guru thereafter you determine the havan kund your field of activity and whatever your talents are you put them in that field you give your best you put on all the efforts towards the achievement of your goals which is what he calls as deva deva means gods so I, i did mention this when we were seeing the application of gods no if you see money as merely money then that becomes a worldly goal but if you give it a divine touch seeing money as a manifestation of god as lakshmi then it becomes a spiritual exercise it becomes a higher goal so this is what our rishis had uh, envisaged so instead of constantly thinking about i me myself what can i get what can i get what can i contribute think in terms of higher and higher things when we come to uh, parasparam bhavayantah i will explain this further what do we exactly mean by parasparam it's a beautiful word we will see that but as of now this much you understand so here is the yajaman that is you and the god represents the goal which you want to attain the god may be a relative god a relative god or the god may be the absolute when the god becomes absolute it is called brahma yagna supposing the god is relative it is that particular yagna towards that relative goal whether you have fixed a relative goal or are you able to work for the highest goal it all depends upon what your level of spiritual growth is but how do you connect how do you establish the connection between you and god you and that goal this is the process once you fix that goal start uh, with your offerings put your heart and soul uh you know uh, in to towards the pursuit of that goal and let it be poured in that havan kund in your field of activity take guidance and do that now the most important factor here what connects you and god he says agni deva the fire god so agnihi what is agnihi with respect to sadhana agnihi is nothing but the bhavana which he is talking about see supposing you want to eat food you have the best nutritious food you have ordered from different sources best food in the world very very costly food is there incidentally best food is not is very simple food only but anyway just for example sake i'm saying all that is there but what is the most important factor it is your hunger that's why they called it as jathar agni that fire which you feel in the stomach now unless that is there you may eat the best of food but you will not benefit so agni the fire that's why they called it as tapas tapaha means burning the sadhana they called as tapas austerities so unless you are fired up with your goal or ideal you will not form a connection 
it is your bhavana which can fetch you anything in life yatha bhavah tatha asi as your bhav so are you so when you fix your goals in life what is it that will take you to your goal what will ensure that you can achieve that goal it is your bhav it is the fire within you come what may i want to achieve this it is the same fire which will take you to the infinite also that fire is called mumukshatva when it when it when the goal becomes the infinite we call that agni as mumukshatva mumukshatva means that intense desire to liberate oneself to go beyond this finite and become one with the infinite so when your seeking deepens you will be fired up with your goal only such people can be achievers see this principle can be applied to fulfill your worldly goals it can be applied to fulfill your relative spiritual goals and it can be used to fulfill your ultimate spiritual goal of god realization so it is easy to say i want to achieve this i want to achieve but are you really having that fire within you are you having that uh, that inspiration what he calls as bhavana bhavam bhavakam these are all just different forms of the same word bhavaka means that attitude one uh, english professor he used to say your attitude measures your altitude means how high will you go in life is determined by your attitude he used to say so the great rishis great yogis they were also ordinary people at one point of time you know some time back i gave you the example of uh, uh, vishwamitra no his original name was kaushika he was a king and when he got defeated by sage vasishta now he decided i want the divine weapon so he did a lot of tapas for that and then again he got defeated with all the divine weapons because what vasishta had was the highest power he was a brahma gnani you know then uh, he said now i will not stop till i become a brahma rishi and uh, he did tapas i i have given that st- uh, that in uh, vishwamitra's story before no you, i don't know how many weeks back but you can find out from it's all there you can watch it again if you want very very inspiring thousands of years of tapas we're talking of almost 4000 years of tapas <laughs> and after 1000 years of tapas due to uh, some uh, action of his what is interesting is he lost all the powers of the tapas which he had done and then he had to start from scratch another 1000 years but he doubled his efforts and after uh, another 1000 years again he loses all the powers then another 1000 years now this time he tripled the, his efforts his uh, when when you read the vishwamitra's life history it's very very inspiring it is not merely sage vishwamitra every achiever does this at a small level but these great rishis practice this principle to reach to the highest to reach the highest level to attain brahma gnana so the agni the fire shooting up and connecting being a like a medium you know between you and the god is 
very symbolic because that is what he is talking of nourishing. Because let, let's just take this uh, uh, procedure. Now you put your oblations here. How, how do you know whether it reaches the gods? The, the Agni carries. This is the uh, beautiful message. So when you put in your efforts in your field, what is the guarantee that you will reach the goal? The guarantee is the Bhavam, the Agni within you. If you are fired up, then only you will be able to consistently do it. Uh, in the next uh, session, we will see the different dimensions of this Bhavaka. What are the different aspects of this Agni which they are talking about? Which you need to build from within. As a Sadak, you need to develop that. And when you develop this fire within you, you get that capacity to do tapas. Now, you can achieve anything which you want. What can't you achieve? You are the center of your life. You are the creator of your life. Unaware of all these powers, you are just sitting and you are saying this problem is bothering me, that problem is bothering me. What problem? See, no problem has so much of power to bother you. You have immense powers within you. You have infinite powers within you. How do you awaken that? This is the method. The yajna, whatever uh, the fire ritual we are talking of, is very, very symbolic of the inner yajna. This is the antar yajna which I am talking about. Last week I told you, you know, Bahya Sadhana, Antar Sadhana. This is the Antar Sadhana, Antar Yajna. So if, it's very interesting. If you take the Yoga Sankirtan Sadhana, which has been suggested to you, it is nothing but the highest Yajna. So you are the Yajamana, the Sadhak, who is going to sit and do. From tomorrow, when you are doing the Yoga Sankirtan Sadhana, do it with this Bhavana and see. So, as a Yajamana, you sit to do the sadhana. Now, invoke, to, when, whenever you do any sadhana, first you should just take a few seconds to, a few minutes to invoke the Guru Shakti. That is the guidance from the Guru which you are taking. The help. And then, now sit and start doing the Yoga Sankirtan, play that Yoga Sankirtan with that fire, with that... See, what is your bhavana, what is your attitude in doing the sadhana? I want to purify myself. I want the, to become one with the infinite. Up to what level you are able to get inspired, you get inspired. That, 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 see, up to what goal you have to fix that, uh, I am not supposed to tell you. I am only giving you examples. So, with that bhav, when you sit and when you start doing the sadhana, you are oblating all your ego, your um, uh, negativities into that fire of tapas which you are doing. And the uh, uh, the sound vibrations uh, are be, you are being exposed to those higher celestial sound vibrations. That is a very yoga sankirtan. A, a very powerful yajna is happening. You, you see, with the moment you do it like that, every day when you are doing your sadhana, uh, you, you it it will have a very powerful impact in your life. Uh, mechanically switching it on and uh, so many people as soon as they wake up they switch put on the yoga sankit uh, they're very sleepy you know and they put on and uh, they go off to further deep sleep from at least before yoga sankitan they were in dream state <laughs> now with yoga sankitan they, they go into a deep sleep state it should be done in a mechanical way
inspire yourself and do the sadhana you can even light a lamp if you want in front invoke the, to invoke the uh, the higher energies the guru shakti that will help it is not a necessity but you can use it you don't need to be against uh, all this also sometimes people think they are so great intellectuals that they are against all rituals that is there is no meaning in that so when you make things very conducive this is the what is the havan kund here havan kund is your physical body when you are doing the yoga sankirtan sadhana it is this is the field of activity and it's your personality you know you close your eyes and the divine vibration start the fire within you will keep on growing and you will start receiving the divine blessings so when we have the release you know on november 10 shri hanuma dhyana it's going to be a very powerful yagna which we are going to perform not the actual fire ritual this is the yogic yagna the yagna the sadhana this is what will really really help you so uh, you take this as homework from today onward okay today you are watching this session so this is your sadhana from tomorrow when you are doing your yoga sankirtan sadhana now uh, bring this uh bhavana this is a yagna which you're going to do and ev- ev- you know in every session you're going to come out more purified with this goal in mind don't be anxious about it i'm only saying bring that inspiration see inspiration is something which is the key element um with respect to sadhana if you are not inspired any amount of wisdom which is being given will not work see it is the yajamana who has to do the yagna not the priest the priest guides the yajamana ensures that he doesn't do something in a wrong way so similarly it is you who needs to do the sadhana not the guru guru will do the sadhana for his growth <laughs> i am saying as far as your growth is concerned you should only put that effort a guru is there to guide and throughout your sadhana whenever you require help you can call the guru shakti the guru shakti will come and automatically guide you that is the again the whole thing is antar sadhana antar yagna the guru is also within you the guru shakti is within you so when you do your sadhana as yagna now quickly the you you will start getting purified because the fire of tapas which you will build the fire of wisdom which you will build will start burning up all your negativities all your karmic blocks you will become a towering personality don't do it in order to become a towering personality then it becomes like this uh, so called <laughs> what is this uh, the self development courses and all they have no it is not that it is self purification when when we are talking of self self development is not an ego boost it is actually the development of the higher self <laughs> or rather development of the lower self to attune it to the higher self that is what we are talking about so you take this up as homework today and uh, you uh, practice this and it's not merely from your next sadhana session every sadhana session take it as yagna every sunday when you come to listen to this it is a yagna which you are going to perform see the moment you bring that thought in mind 
now there is a sanctity about it you cannot do it casually you will not do it casually if i have time i'll do it what do you mean if i have time i'll do it you that you should become a yajamana no guru shakti will come and help a person who does not want to help himself or herself so right where you are whichever part of the world you may be in it does not matter right wherever you are you can start performing the sadhana of yagna the material has been given to you the the yoga sankirtan has been made into a very simple format and has been given to you now how much you use it for your personal edification that is up to you what is the fire which you are having great great yogis you know who have achieved so much spiritually they all had that fire even worldly achievers any great achiever you see in any field that person will have that fire that inner fire in with respect to that field so i get i explain to you the the basic way in which yagna is to be done just to uh, deepen the the your sadhana because every day you are doing your sadhana if you understand these are all the different aspects the yajamana the higher guru shakti is there this is the havan kund my personality and we are going to start the purification process that's why i said if you want you can light a lamp to invoke the higher shakti see in our uh, tradition lighting a lamp is a way through which we invoke the higher shakti of course there is more some uh, meaning to it the wick represents the ego the uh, uh, oil represents the uh, uh, devotion and uh, you know the fire represents this knowledge so when you light the lamp the wick is burnt away your ego burns away so those are the deeper meanings there but primarily even if you don't understand all that no problem with your sincere bhavana if you just light the lamp invoking the higher shakti invoking the guru shakti that will put you on a very uh, wonderful positive psychological uh, frame of mind to be able to do the sacred yagna sadhana through the yoga sankirtan okay so this week you practice this and come from this from tomorrow onwards every session now you're going to do it like this in the spirit of yagna and just imagine when you prepare yourself thus and then on november 10th when shri mat hanumat dhyana release that is like a maha yagna which is going to happen you know what amount of benefit you will get and after that immediately in december the 22 day empowerment course i told you know this time it's on attracting abundance so already the uh, preparatory uh, work has started the healing has started so you so much of blessings are there to be received so right from now itself start getting prepared okay so now we'll do the nididhyasana meditation gently close your eyes do deep breathing
with every breath i am becoming more and more relaxed feel the divine vibrations with every breath i am going deeper and deeper into myself I am not this body I am not this mind I am not these thoughts I am the atma the pure soul my nature is infinite
from this moment onwards i choose to do the sacred sadhana of yagna I am Swayam Prakashit, Self-Illuminating. offer your gratitude to god supreme offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters slowly come back Wriggle your fingers, your toes. Rub your palms together to create a warmth. Cup your eyes with your palms. Gently rub your eyes, your cheeks, forehead, top of the head, back of the head and neck. Slowly open your eyes. Welcome back. So today, some very powerful principles have been given to you. You can practice it in any area of your life. Whatever it is that you're doing, do it with that fire and passion. 
don't do it in a dull way calmness is not dullness <laughs> some people think being calm means being very dull and tamasic it's not that and brightness should be there and do your sadhana on a daily basis the preparation has already started every sunday i am preparing you for the release of shri hanuman dhyana and also the healing the preparatory healing is is being given on a daily basis for for the 22 day empowerment program in december so the moment you register for that program do it consciously see everything which you do should be a conscious choice so when you are registering for the program it is a commitment which you are making i am going to set aside 22 days every day what it's just around 2 to 1 hours for self purification for the higher growth so when you register register with that commitment that is very important so from that moment where you have registered that is where where you have committed this healing shakti will be sent to you and be very consistent in your daily sadhana that is a basic thing which cannot be compromised all this is so that you can benefit maximum from uh, all these higher practices okay so if you have any questions regarding the 22 day program also you can uh, send your questions all that will be clarified in due course so thank you very much i'll see you in the next session hari om